Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. And I say liquor is superior to social media. Amanda, please. Sorry, I don't know anybody named Amanda, please. The Amanda Show, a sketch comedy show from the late 90s that launched as a spinoff of all that, ran for roughly three years, and ruined the name Amanda for every generation following. The Amanda Show was created by Dan Schneider, who would go on to create Drake and Josh, Victorious, a few other shows, and then have to leave Nickelodeon in 2018. Even though the series was quite popular, it basically ended right after it got started, which was pretty ahead of its time for Nickelodeon, wasn't it? While The Amanda Show was one of the most short-lived series created by Dan Schneider, it is definitely one of the most memorable at that. I was recently feeling nostalgic for it, so I decided to talk about it today. So today we'll be going over the basic history of the show, much like I have before with a few previous shows, so the rules are the same. We'll be going over the development and its run, not many nitty gritty behind the scenes details. But before I talk about that, I wanted to go over my personal experiences with the show because my history with the series is quite different compared to most people I know who watched it back in the day. So without further ado, let's get started. Now most people I know actually watched the series during the time when it was running or very shortly after it ended. Not me though. Has anybody ever had any experiences where they turn on the TV and watch the show that was on your favorite TV channel, but when it was over, you forget what it was, but the image of that show stuck in your brain ever since? For me, that was basically how I remembered The Amanda Show. I was too young to be truly invested in shows when that series was in its a -day. I was also too young to remember how old I was or what year it was when I saw it for the first time. I saw a couple clips from a couple episodes, but I had no f clue what show this was. Then, in 2007, the Drake and Josh episode, Really Big Shrimp, premiered, and the scene of Drake and Josh fighting over the shrimp came on, and I wondered how they got that clip. I could tell it was a younger Drake and Josh, but I didn't know where it came from. At the time the episode premiered, I didn't even know that these three words existed. Then during the summer of 2012, I discovered the Team Nick Network and saw that it had several of the live action shows from when I was young, like Drake and Josh, Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, Zoe 101, etc. Once I discovered it, I watched it constantly and relived several of my favorite memories from the years when those shows were on. Later that year, I started high school and within the school year, both iCarly and Victorious ended. But around the time the latter went off the air, I discovered reruns of The Amanda Show on Team Nick. By this point, I had discovered that that series was created by the same guy who created Zoe 101 and iCarly, so I decided to watch The Amanda Show, and I fell in love with it. At the same time, some episodes had been uploaded onto YouTube by fans, so I watched several of the episodes there too. Of course, they're all taken down now, but I enjoyed watching them while it lasted. And during this time, I discovered the shrimp clip originated from this show and that it was the inspiration for Drake and Josh in the first place, and I remembered what scenes I watched while the show was on the air. Those scenes were the Snap Crackle Kaboom commercial, specifically the part where the cereal blows up in Grandma's face, and a few clips from episode 30. Those scenes were the beginning when Drake and Josh tried to open the show and the audience was pissed off, this shot from the ham commercial, the Totally Kyle skit, and the part with Penelope Tane. It was a surreal experience figuring all this out for the first time, and all the other episodes I watched helped shape my sense of humor into what it is today. And thank god because if it weren't for this time, I may not even have a sense of humor today. I watched The Amanda Show for roughly the rest of that year of high school, and soon started watching Keenan and Kel and all that, and The Amanda Show slipped my mind for a while. I've been a fan of all of them ever since, and I'll always have times where I'd watch either of those shows or anything else from my childhood or teenage years for a long time, then have another memory and be obsessed with another show for a while, and the cycle repeats infinitely. Recently, my interest in The Amanda Show peaked again, so much so that I watched it on Paramount Plus and bought all these season DVDs online. I mostly got them because Paramount Plus has only 24 episodes to stream, and with these DVDs, I get 36 episodes preserved forever. You can call it an impulse buy, I call it buying out of frustration without all the episodes on Paramount Plus, and an impulse buy. And that is my history with The Amanda Show. I have some great memories from my adolescent years from this series, so now let's get into the actual history of the show. 
All That was a sketch comedy show created to be a more kid-friendly and diverse version of Saturday Night Live. The original cast from the first two seasons consisted of seven cast members. The show premiered in 1994 and became so popular that it would run until 2005, with a brief hiatus lasting from late 2000 to late 2001. After season 2 ended in March 2006, one of the cast members, Angelique Bates, left the show and a new cast member, Amanda Bynes, was added. She would be a cast member all the way through season 6, which was the end of the classic series of all that. Amanda hosted her own skit called Ask Ashley, where she'd read a letter and scream at whoever wrote it, calling them f***ing idiots. This sketch made Amanda Bynes a fan favorite cast member while she was on the show. After season 5 ended in 1999, Amanda was approached by writer and producer Dan Schneider and would star in her own show to premiere later that year. This kind of thing isn't unheard of because all that veterans Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell were given their own show, Keenan and Kel, in 1996. However, that was a sitcom and the show Amanda would be given would be a whole different kind of sketch comedy show. This would have some key differences from all that. Every episode of All That ended with a musical guest, and The Amanda Show... didn't. The Amanda Show had a cast member who appeared in every skit from every episode, roughly, while All That had an ensemble cast and felt more balanced as to how many scenes each cast member appeared in. The Amanda Show would be faster paced compared to All That and would have roughly one or two more skits in a regular episode. Other cast members were added onto the show, including Drake Bell, Johnny Kassir, Raquel Lee, and Nancy Sullivan. Even though this was a sketch show, it seemed to have been filmed like a regular sitcom because there are some bloopers and behind the scenes with the cast that are online and released on some old home media releases back in the mid-2000s after the show ended. Filming occurred throughout 1999 and the series premiered on October 16, 1999. The show became a hit pretty quickly. Season 1 consisted of 13 episodes, which all aired from October 1999 to February 2000. The popularity of the show resulted in another season pretty quickly. A season 2 was picked up in 2000 and filming commenced later that year. A few changes occurred in between seasons 1 and 2. Raquel Lee and Johnny Kassir left the show and a new series regular was added, Josh Peck. Season 1 also had this animated intro produced by Nickelodeon Animation Studios, and starting with Season 2, the show had this intro that people are likely more familiar with. Season 2 premiered on July 15, 2000. That season, a new skit that wasn't treated as a skit per se, called Moody's Point, was added to the show. This was created to be just a regular show to have Amanda Bynes star in, and to have a spin-off of The Amanda Show, but it was mainly just done as a way to increase Amanda Bynes' popularity, but we'll come back to this later. Season 2 had 17 episodes, bringing the total number of episodes in the whole series to 30. The season aired throughout the rest of 2000 and into 2001, and it wrapped up on April 7, 2001. A third season was picked up later that year and would come out in 2002. No major change happened in between seasons 2 and 3. The cast from Season 2 stayed the same in Season 3, and no new series regulars were added, and the intro from Season 2 remained unchanged as well, and Season 3 premiered on January 19, 2002. Season 3 had 10 episodes, bringing the total amount of episodes to 40. The Moody's Point segment still occurred in Season 3. Even though the show was very popular at this time, Season 3 would be the final season, much to the shock of fans and even the producers. Season 3 aired throughout 2002, and the final episode aired on September 21st, 2002, roughly three years after the season premiere. It was surprising to many fans when the show ended. Creator Dan Schneider suspected the show ended because he wanted to create another show called What I Like About You for WB, and Amanda Bynes also starred in that. However, with all my research as to find out why The Amanda Show ended at the time it did, I found this article with an interview from Amanda herself from that same year. According to the article, Amanda herself wanted to lead to pursue other projects, not wanting to be a Nickelodeon kid when she turned 30. Well, you officially become an adult by 18, and 35 is the year to run for office. Nah, while I understand her sentiment, it was still upsetting when it ended. I should know, I wasn't there. But even though that was where the show's run ended, the story doesn't. 
As previously stated, Moody's Point was created to be a spin-off from The Amanda Show. Whenever it was introduced, Amanda would show it off to the audience as if it was its own show. Everybody, Moody's Point. It was meant to be a bit of a combo of a soap opera, teen drama, and sitcom. It featured an entirely different cast, writing style, and filming style compared to the base Amanda show. It ended on a cliffhanger because creator Dan Schneider was expecting another season of The Amanda Show, and even he felt that The Amanda Show ended too soon, so even he didn't get to see how Moody's Point would continue since he never had the chance to write it. He tried to pitch Moody's Point to the network, but it wasn't greenlit, and elements of it would be reused in Selby 101 a few years later in 2005. However, he still had another attempt to make a spin-off of The Amanda Show. As we all know, episode 39, the second to last episode, featured the famous scene of Drake and Josh fighting over a piece of shrimp. This scene was so funny that a show starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck, later known as Drake and Josh, would premiere in January 2004. Some elements from The Amanda Show would be used in Drake and Josh, like Drake and Josh having a younger sister, most likely because of how well the two of them bounced off of Amanda Bynes when all of them were playing various characters in The Amanda Show. Nancy Sullivan, who also starred in The Amanda Show, came on to Drake and Josh as the mother, Audrey. And as everybody knows, the final episode film features a modern recreation of the scene that inspired the show in the first place, which leads into that very same clip ending off this episode. Even though Really Big Shrimp didn't air as the final episode of the series, re-watching it knowing it was filmed as a series finale and knowing what inspired the show in the first place makes it hit so much more differently. Reruns occurred on other networks occasionally like The N and Teen Nick, but by March 2013, the reruns ended forever. And that is roughly the entire history of The Amanda Show. It was sad seeing it end at the time it did, but its legacy will forever live on and I think we're all happy with the story ending here. Brace for impact! What are you doing, loser? Preparing for the world to burn? What? Whenever I talk about a TV show, that's usually the part where some kind of garbage reboot, revival, or spin-off will show up to ruin its legacy. And I can't stand the thought of some kind of garbage Amanda Show reboot. Well, there is no reboot of The Amanda Show, so knock it off. No reboot? Really? Yeah, I just said that. Jeez. Whew. That's a relief. Well, that's good that there's no reboot of The Amanda Show. But I still have some time left, so... Uh, here's some fun facts. Even though there's only 40 normal episodes of the series, four episodes from Season 1, Episodes 1, 5, 8, and 12, are never released on home media due to distribution costs of the songs used in those episodes. Basically the same reason why SpongeBob Episode 1, Help Wanted, wasn't put on the Season 1 DVD due to use of the Tiny Tim song, Living in the Sunlight, in that episode. I have no idea why this was such a trend for Nickelodeon in the 90s. This means that those four episodes are basically lost media at this point, but at least 90% of the show's episodes are on these DVDs. Episode 29 from Season 2 was also banned from airing on TV because one of the skits, The Lucklesses, featured a scene where a flaming meteor fell from the sky and destroyed a family's house, which was very reminiscent of current world events that happened that year. Despite that, the episode was still released on Paramount Plus, digitally, and on the Season 2 DVD. It's just odd to me that they actually allowed it on Paramount Plus in 2021, even though they banned it from airing on TV 20 years prior. And it's also funny that that episode was banned in 2001 because of current world events, but in 2023, episode 6 would have been banned for the scene where the audience didn't speak English. Amanda, the audience, they don't speak any English. Huh? And Amanda had to teach them. And speaking of which, I own these official season DVDs that released in March 13, 2012, 9.5 years after the series ended. I have no idea what their goals were releasing the DVDs so long after the show's final episode because nobody would have known these things existed. I'm also not proud for the prices I spent for them online, but hey, this means we can increase the number of human beings who own 90% of The Amanda Show on DVD in the year 2023 to 1. 
Yeah, that's right. Step in line, ladies. I also appreciate how the Season 1 DVD says the best of Season 1 instead of the complete Season 1 since a few episodes are missing, so therefore it's not the full season. Unlike Spongebob where the Season 1 and 12 DVDs say the complete seasons despite the fact that both DVDs are missing one episode each. Well that's one point The Amanda Show has over Spongebob. The Amanda Show was a fun show while it lasted. It's still fun to look back on despite how short lived it was. Even though my experiences with the series are different compared to most people I know who watch it, I'm still happy that I got to experience it nonetheless. I'm also definitely happy that there is no reboot of the series, but I wish the original show could have gone on for, at the very least, another 10 episodes. I think I've said pretty much everything I can say about The Amanda Show right now, but I do have more plans for the series in the future. But that's all the time we have today, I gotta go sabotage a space shuttle. See ya!